Now, uh, I would like to show you some interesting things. So what is the ultimate goal? You can see here, for robotics, we want to become a superhuman. Okay, we want to become a, a superhuman like Iron Man. Okay, you see, of course you have seen the movie uh, Iron Man. Okay, so we want to become like that. And for ultimate goal of embedded system or uh, 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 embedded system is what? The intelligent machine. Okay, if we can build intelligent machine, it will reduce the power. It will make our things less expensive. Okay, it will, it will cut the cost. It will save the energy. Okay, so that is our ultimate goal. So let's see why we want to, we want intelligent machine. One is energy saving. Yeah, if our machine can automatically sense, like when our car is in a uh, traffic signal, it's not necessary to turn on the engine. It should stop the engine. And when that will, traffic light will become green, it can start the engine again. So it can save energy on that way. I know there are some car do the same. Okay, when it's in brake, uh, zero acceleration, that means the engine is off. Okay, and when you just uh, accelerate the engine or accelerate, accelerator, press the accelerator, then the engine will turn on again. Okay, so energy saving is one very important issue uh, for intelligent machine. Okay, then accuracy. Okay, you know, we are imperfect. A human being cannot make things, cannot, make, uh, cannot do very, very, how to say, uh, very, very tiny work, okay? Like uh, shouldering the IC or this kind, of, uh, this kind of task are very difficult for us, okay? So a robot can help us for doing accurate things, okay? And also, if we human being make the same thing uh, two times, the two devices will not become the same, okay? One will be a bit different from another one because that is the problem. But for the machine, they can build the same thing again and again and again. Okay, so accuracy is another issue for an intelligent machine. And then convenience. Okay, like uh, in, in, in a high temperature, human being cannot work like a uh, chim like a, how to say uh, um, what you can call. Engine room, okay, engine, engine room become very hot after a few hours. So for a human being, it's very difficult to work inside the engine room. So a robot can work inside that or an intelligent machine can work in, in, inside that. And also there are some, uh, uh, I'll show you some uh, field where we really need, badly need the robots, okay, for convenience and then efficiency, okay. A robot or a smart system can perform some task in efficient way. And then another very important issue is dynamicity, okay, or ability to work in a dynamic environment. You know, we are in a dynamic environment. Like, I, I, I will not be standing in the same place after a few minutes, okay. When we will break our car, we will not, we will not stop in the same point, okay. When you, when you come to the classroom, every time you don't sit in the same chair, okay, even it's uh, vacant. You don't, you, you don't sit, okay? So we are in a dynamic environment. So our robot or our machine should be adaptable in that kind of dynamic environment. Okay, so that's why intelligence is very, very important. And also to perform dull, dirty, difficult, dangerous job. We call it 4D, okay? So for performing that kind of 4Ds or to work in that kind of 4Ds environment, we badly need robots, okay? So you can see here some pictures, okay? One is Fukushima Daiichi, you know, you know the nuclear disaster in, in, in Japan. And one is World Trade Center, okay? And you can see two examples in, of Bangladesh. One is Rana, Rana Complex and Tazrin Fashion. Okay, we really, we badly needed robots to work in such environment, okay? People are saying they used, USA says that they used uh, tiny robots in World Trade Center when, it, when it, it, how to say, it destroyed. Okay, at that time they used some robots, but I don't know, I, I, I'm not sure how, uh, how to say, how useful it was. But we, we really need a very tiny, small size robot that, could, that can find life, that can find human being if someone trapped in some place, okay? So, we... We really want to do the thing that living thing cannot or living object cannot, okay? So what we cannot do, our robot should perform that kind of things. Like that's in fashion, in fire. Yeah, we cannot go inside the fire. We cannot go inside a smoke, okay? But a robot can go inside the fire. 
a robot can go inside the smoke. Okay, so for that kind of purpose, of course, we need to build some robot. Okay, and robots is very necessary for how to say disaster management or this kind of purpose. Okay, so here, here is some application of dull, dirty, dangerous, and difficult uh, 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 scenario. Okay, you can see the scenario for cleaning the what, what, what do you call this the drain or something like this. Yes, of course, we need some robot. Okay, you can see here. So that was dirty work. Okay, this place was dirty place. So for do to perform some dirty task like uh, like uh, cleaning the toilet, cleaning the drain, we need some robotic application or clean the road. Okay, so cleaning the road is also also dangerous. Okay, not only difficult, uh, dirty, but also difficult. You can see in this scenario, this is a difficult task. Task. Okay, so you can see the cutting the tree, uh, fixing something inside the uh, electric grid line. Okay, these are the dangerous task okay to perform or to work or to do some work in this kind of uh, uh, application we badly need the robot you know what what people do in uh, electrical office what they do they just turn off the grid line and they work on it okay so that means people are in blackout on the time so that is not an ideal situation so we really want to have our electricity in our home all the time and but we also need to fix some problem okay so we need robot in this purpose so for performing dangerous task of course we need robot okay and these are uh, these are uh, simultaneously dirty and difficult task you see the left side the guy is working in a, a, you can see coal mine okay so for coal mining still we are using human being that is not fair okay so this kind of purpose of course we need robots and you see here, one is uh, ship breaking industry, one is leather uh, processing industry. Okay, you know these are hazardous environment. So to perform, to, to do work in this hazardous environment, we should have some robot. Okay, you should think about robot about this kind of circumstances. Okay, so this is a, a scenario of a garments. It's a dull work. Okay, people are doing the same thing again and again and again. So to perform this kind of dull work, we can have some robots okay some people can ask me sir so uh, when we will use robots instead of human being a number of a girl will lose their job but what do you think are they working hard so that their next generation will work in garments again what do you think no so they are working hard they are saving money to how to say make their children educated their children is not going to work in this kind of environment they are not going to, uh, how to say, push their kids in the garments. No. So what is going to happen in future? When all of us, when 100% literacy, literacy will be achieved, okay, we will not get any uh, worker. So robot is badly needed in this purpose. Maybe not today. Maybe after, after a few days, we are going to have that discussion after a few slides, like where we should use a robot. But yeah, of course we need some robot. Now, why we want to become a superhuman? There are some uh, causes here. Because we have a number of limitations. Like we have sensor, but we don't have the perfect, perfect sensor. We can see, but we cannot perfectly say what color that is. Okay, how much red, how much green, how much blue is there. We cannot say. Okay, we can listen, but we can only listen 20 to 2000 uh, hertz. Okay, that means we don't listen everything. Okay, we can sense, but we can only sense the temperature between 10 to maybe 35. Okay, less than 10, we can say very cold. Okay, over, over uh, 45, we can say very hot, but we cannot sense that temperature. So we can only sense a limited uh, amount of things. Okay, we, we, uh, we really have the limitation on sensing. Then numerical process so we are overcoming that kind of sensing issues by using some sensors okay we have light sensor or we, can, we have some camera that can sense the color very easily we can have we have microphone it can sense the sound very nicely okay different frequency sound so that is one thing we don't have perfect sensor so we need to have we can smell but we don't smell everything for information the smelling is not uh, 
uh, decoded yet okay we can test but we don't test everything we cannot test everything for sure okay so we need sensors and of course sensor fusion then numerical processing we cannot process big data not only big data but just a calculation if i say 4399 into 221 equal to what we cannot say in very short time but if you just put on the calculator it can say within a second okay not even in the second in the microsecond it, it can tell you okay so for numerical processing we need machines okay so computer is going to play a very very important role for your numerical processing and it's perfectly performing our task then the muscle power okay we don't we don't have very strong muscle okay even we cannot run as fast as a cheetah even we cannot how to say uh, we cannot bite like a uh, goat even okay or uh, like a dog okay so we don't have very good muscle power okay but but you know we can fly in 500 kilometer speed even in some plane it it, it fly in 1000 kilometer speed okay so we can fly we don't have the wing but we can fly we don't have we 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 have a le we have two legs but we can run maximum maybe 30 to 35 kilometer speed but we can travel in 150 kilometer speed now there are some bullet trains that can uh, run in 500 kilometer speed okay so we could achieve all these things by using engine by using engineering by using motors by using actuators okay so that's why we want to become superhuman then communication we cannot communicate so long even we cannot communicate Japanese people cannot communicate with the Bangladeshi people who don't speak okay so we have limitations okay we have limitation of path planning we don't know which path will be shorter for us okay maybe we can calculate it takes a long time so for path planning we need some algorithm okay we need some some help from the computer or help some uh, system okay then localization where am I okay if you just close your eyes and people just uh, put inside a car and then uh, just how to say release you and ask you where are you you cannot say okay so for localization that is another issue we need to know where am I okay so GPS can help in this regard so we have a uh, so we have a number of limitations so to overcome that limitation we need sensor we need computer we need robots we need engineerings we need engines okay we need algorithms we need satellites okay to overcome our limitations okay so that's why we want to become superhuman as i shown you uh, uh, iron man he could over overcome these limitations by using this kind of things you know okay even great power it has a great power okay so now I want to show you some popular humanoid robot. One is now you can see here. Then Hubo, yes, it's a humanoid robot. So since I, I'm, I was telling you we want to become superhuman, so there are some humanoid robots in current world you can see here. But those are not superhuman, of course, not superhuman. So this is a, they started to make some robot humanoid robot maybe after a few years after a few decades we'll be able to make superhuman okay so uh, asimo okay and you know this is made by boston dynamics uh, uh yeah boston dynamics okay and of course sophia is another very good creation okay and this robot is built by nasa okay and this is an interesting robot uh, Dubai, I think in Dubai, Dubai they built, they, they, they bought this robot from, I don't know which other company, but th this is a wonderful, not wonderful, this is a scary robot, okay, they are using in their airport, I think, okay. So, now, we are discussing about the application or necessity of robots. Now, we need to understand uh, the law of robotics like we cannot build a robot for distraction we cannot robot build a robot for killing people okay so that is that should be the law of robotics that should be the law of AI robot it's actually proposed by uh, Isaac Asimov but I really agree with him okay if we want to build uh, we want to build robot or AI robot we should maintain these laws okay number one is a robot should not harm any human being by any way okay so 
that is number one rule. And the second rule is a, ma a robot always obey to a human being without violating the first law. Like, yes, of course it will obey to you, but if it says go and kill Khalil, should not do it. Okay. And third law is a robot should have the freedom to save itself or themselves, but without violating first two law. Okay. So if they can save their life by without violating first two laws, then they can save their life. Okay, and the last one is proposed by me. A uh, robot should have a kill switch because since it's a uh, 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 mechanical things or it's electronics object, it can malfunction anytime. Okay, so to stop it should have a kill switch. Okay, so that uh, community can stop it. Okay, and now this is this is the law of uses of robot. Okay, so by uh, understanding this law of uses of robot, I believe a number of uh, confession will be cleared. Number one thing is a robot can build to perform dull, dirty, dangerous and difficult tasks. There is no doubt we can build robot for performing these kind of tasks. Okay, but second rule says without leaving or not leave a human jobless. Okay, we can build a robot for this purpose, like for garments. Yes, we can build robot for garments, but if a number of human being become jobless for, for, for these, we should not use at this moment. Okay, so that is the second law, and third law is, if when a number of robot will become available in our market, when we need. Uh, something or some, ro some some robot for doing or some we need some help for performing some task and there is a candidate a human candidate who want to who wish to do that job we should engage him or her okay so again the robot is always to make our life enjoyable not miserable okay so we should if there is a candidate human and a robot, then we should choose a human. Okay, and last law is should have a economic sense, okay, like either long-term economic sense or short-term economic sense. You, you invested a lot for your industry automation, but you couldn't get any profit, you couldn't make any, uh, a, 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 any economic benefit, then this is not fair. Okay, so you should think about robotics, you should think about uses of robot when you will get some economic sense or economic benefit. So that was about our uh, uh, some rules about our robot. So our next class we will be discussing about some applications or some types of robot. Okay, thank you very much for this moment.